This episode brought to you by Noble Gold. You know, it's a new year, time for new things. With a new administration in Washington, our friends at Noble Gold have all the protection you need. How? By using gold and silver in your own IRA. You insulate it from the markets. If anything bad happens, you're safe and dry. Protect with a gold IRA this month and Noble Gold will gift you this stunning solid silver Apollo 11 commemorative coin from the US Mint. So it's worth jumping on the phone and calling 877-646-5347 now. That's 877-646-5347. <laughs> Hey, welcome back, everybody. Wanted to show you this story. We all already know that NPR, National Public Radio, and PBS, that these outlets are biased. They are politically biased to the left, and, and more specifically to the Democrat Party. So the article starts out here. A number of public radio outlets and staffers have endorsed a new vision statement that calls for ending objectivity, paying reparations, and endorsing statements of belief, including climate change is real and Black Lives Matter, in a bid to create an anti-racist future. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just assume that when they say anti-racist, they mean extremely racist, which is how all this stuff goes with these Orwellian Marxist folks. And make no mistake, all of this stuff comes from Marxism and critical race theory, but we'll get back to that here in a little bit. Uh, climate change is real and Black Lives Matter. Two very innocuous phrases, right? I mean, climate change is real. I, I don't know anybody who denies climate change is real. Even people who uh, stand against or are critical of uh, anthropomorphic global warming, that's man-made global warming, they don't necessarily disagree that climate change is real. Everybody knows that the Earth's climate changes and has changed for a long time. So it's an innocuous statement. Same with Black Lives Matter. Everybody knows, we've talked about this before, besides some fringe lunatics, sociopaths out there that don't think that Black Lives Matter, but you know those people don't think any lives matter. They, they're sociopaths. But you know, normal people believe both. You know, agree with both those statements. Problem is, uh, they're both Trojan horses because the people that want you to make these statements of belief, they all come from this far left Marxist and I think ultimately communist movement that's literally trying to take over this country right now. So they signed a new call to action that demands public media atone for past racism and hire black, indigenous, and people of color, uh, which essentially means hire anybody but white people. And this whole thing about atoning for past racism, I mean, uh, a lot of this stuff has to do with groveling essentially to this to this group that are making essentially these threats and are demanding that people uh, agree with them and make all these statements so that uh, nobody has any scrutiny or criticism. Not, none of that's allowed. You just must agree with what they say, with their beliefs. And believe me, there there's no peer-reviewed uh, facts or studies or data or anything that uh, um, backs up what any of these people are claiming. But one thing you're going to notice in all of this is a real lack of scrutiny or criticism from anybody. And we all know why that is, because anybody who dares question any of this is going to be set upon as, you know, racist, white supremacist, or whatever other word bomb that they're going to throw at you to shut you up. So the, this goes on. The document published by Current, and I have that article here, the publication uh, for public media workers declared white supremacist culture and anti-blackness shaped the policies, norms, and standards of public radio. I mean, really? Really now? Uh, as Newsbusters points out, NPR's All Things Considered had a black co-author, Michelle Morris, and then a black co-anchor, Audie Cornish. Uh, Weekend All Things Considered stars black anchor Michael Martin. NPR added a code switch project in 2013 to pacify the desire to talk endlessly about race. And that included a promotional interview in August with the author of the book, In Defense of Looting. NPR actually had to apologize for that piece, actually saying that Code Switch brings the NPR audience provocative research all the time. It's part of their mission to advance the conversation on race. Australia went on to say that the looting is ensured that looters target businesses that aren't rooted in the local community and that the civil rights movement only adopted nonviolence to appeal to white northerners. All those statements deserved pushback. Code Switch editor Stephen Drummond said that the article was fact-checked, but not enough. We have updated the intro to this interview to give readers more context, he wrote in an email. This 
This notion of looting and the role it plays in the public discourse is a fair target, and we often interview authors who have controversial opinions and viewpoints. We should have challenged them more. But yeah, all these things really, and, and combined with the fact that NPR and public radio in general and the media in general are in the tank for one party, the Democrat Party, the, the left party. And so, you know, one thing that I would say is that there's definitely some, you know, some bias and stuff going on over at NPR, which isn't right because it is public radio, which means that we all pay into that. Now, they would tell you, oh, it's just 1%. It's just 1%. Well, guess what, folks? That's millions and millions of dollars. It's like these people expect uh, public radio to be there to fund and drive their revolution, you know, their, their far-left narrative and agenda. So there's this lady, Celeste Headley, and uh, she tweeted out uh, bragging that we are edging toward 400 signatories with support from eight organizations. But just to give you a little taste of who Celeste is, just check out this clip. My book didn't start out as a book. My book started out as a research project to figure out what was going wrong in my own life. Um, so I tried to figure out what was causing that. And what I realized, it wasn't a problem unique to me. It was actually a problem in our broader society. And it was built by design, not uh, within the past 20 years, but two to 300 years ago. Um, and these toxic habits that every generation has leaned into and leaned into until here we are where we're miserable. The cult of efficiency is a phrase uh, that Bertrand Russell coined decades ago. This was in like the 1930s. And yet we didn't heed his warning. We have sort of kept joining the cult and bringing our kids into the cult and loving the cult. <laughs> the cult of efficiency is this idea that um, if you are more efficient and more productive, you're a better person. The amount of work that you produce that makes you a good human being. Um, and it's a cult because that's not natural. And it's something that we have to be indoctrinated into. And we have been indoctrinated into it. And we're really, really good cult members at this point. But we kind of need a little bit of a deprogramming. Well, 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 there's that phrase again, deprogramming. We've been hearing a lot of that lately, haven't we? And I just want to say, the level of work one does, does make them more valuable. It doesn't necessarily make them a better person. That's something she just came up with all on her own. But it definitely makes you more valuable. There is one place where all of this rhetoric would find a nice home, and that's communism. You don't believe me? Just look at this. Uh, and they say, it's time for a new kind of journalism, anti-racist journalism. We hope to tear down public radio in order to build it back up. Public radio newsrooms must transform their coverage by insisting on diverse newsrooms, ending the pursuit of objectivity, rigorously pursuing racial diversity in sourcing and audiences, and developing ethics codes that embrace anti-racism and harm reduction. I mean, th none of this stuff is based in any kind of like logic or reason or objectivity. Um, it's just like that uh, document that was put out by the Smithsonian attacking white supremacist uh, uh, Western culture. If you look at that document, um, what did it say? It said uh, objective and rational linear thinking. Rational thinking is white supremacist, everybody. Cause and effect relationships. Quantitative emphasis. I mean, scientific method, folks. This is how we've progressed as a society. And, and it's funny, too, because if you scroll down here, uh, the Protestant work ethic. Hard work is the key to success. Work before play. If you didn't meet your goals, you didn't work hard enough. And we see that that's what uh, Celeste Headley is all about. And so all of this stuff really goes back to critical race theory. Criticisms of critical race theory. Um, people like Jeffrey Pyle wrote that critical race theorists attack the very foundations of the class classical liberal legal order, including equal, uh, equality theory, legal reasoning, uh, enlightened rationalism, and neutral principles of constitutional law. These liberal values, they allege, have no enduring basis in principle, but are mere social constructs calculated to legitimate, le uh, legitimate white supremacy. Uh, there's also been legal criticism of critical race theory, saying that what is most arresting about critical race theory is that it turns us back on the Western tradition of rational inquiry, forswearing, analysis, or narrative. Rather than martial logical arguments and empirical data, critical race theorists all tell stories. Fictional, science fictional, quasi-fictional, autobiographical, anecdotal, designed to expose pervasive and de debilitating racism of America today. And I agree with this 100%. You see this in the 
media reporting uh, police shootings. I've talked about this a lot. Do you ever see them reporting on unarmed white people who are shot by police? No, they don't. They only report on black people who are shot by police. And even then, they'll withhold da uh, details about those shootings and just sort of uh, paint all of them as unjustified or racially motivated in some way. And another criticism here that I found uh, pretty interesting is from uh, Judge Alex Kozinski, and he said, The radical multiculturalist views raise insuperable barriers to mutual understanding. And that's the way this seems like the uh, the uh, demands that they're making in this article. There's like no room for any discussion or they are demands and you must make them. You must not criticize or question anything that we're saying. You must just fall into line uh, near the end here. They have a bunch of statements of support from different public radio stations. And uh, I don't want to go through all of them, but. One of them here at near the end is just a statement of support, and it says, you know, we, we are doing our best to to get uh, people of color into these positions because that's the way it should be. And uh, thank you for your leadership, and I look forward to watching public media begin a long-needed transformation. Long needed tr Steve Swanson. Well, who's Steve Swanson? Steve Swanson's a white guy. <laughs> well... Steve Swanson, if you really believe all of this is, is true and uh, above any kind of scrutiny or criticism or questions of any kind, well, why aren't you stepping down? Why are you staying in this position? Uh, uh, oh, oh, he just means all those other white people need to go, not him, because he likes being in that job. He's not going to give up that job. Implementation includes unusual changes in the newsroom. One, for example, is to create statements of beliefs for our journalists, which you already talked about. Also, white managers are cited for not promoting minorities should be replaced. Okay, so if you're a white manager and you're not playing along, you're not hiring people based on their skin color, like avoiding, don't hire white people, hire these people, you're going to be replaced. Guess what? You're going to become one of the people that we're getting rid of. One of those icky white supremacist people. We're going to get rid of all that. If you're not playing along, you're with the white supremacists. What's more, the diversity of sources used by reporters must be analyzed to make sure it's not too white. I mean, listen to this stuff, folks. I mean, can you imagine, let's say that they were talking about Jewish people. Oh, I, I, we got to make sure that these sources aren't too Jewish because you know how them Jewish people are. I'm not saying this. I don't believe this, uh, Susan, just so you know. I have no problem with Jewish people. I'm being sarcastic here. To prove a point, minority hiring should surge, it warned. If you're not getting applications from qualified black, indigenous, or people of color, you outreach. As for reparations, in addition to apologies to individuals and communities, public media leaders should offer specific concrete forms of reparations and accountability to the people harmed. And, you know, a lot of this stuff, the apologies, it, it reminds me so much of what you see from these communist countries uh, or, or these countries with dictators whenever they have political prisoners and they force them to make political statements as if to kind of alleviate them of any criticism or questioning because uh, once you apologize well then you've just admitted it the debate is over yeah folks i don't know look i'm against racism i i love to eradicate racism although i'm not sure how possible that is because racism is something that's just sort of a part of humanity and it, it really just deals with people's own inner thoughts and so i don't think that you're ever, unless you're policing people's thoughts or somehow uh controlling their thoughts i don't know how you're ever gonna do that i think you just sort of have to live in a world where you realize there's gonna be assholes and just try to be the best person that you can be and, and treat people like you want to be treated this kind of stuff is nefarious af uh and not for least of which because you know they see things as emphasis on scientific method or work ethic as something negative or something that needs to be eradicated or something that they attach to this nebulous ghost uh, ghostly monster called white supremacy